Why is he talking about Arnold Palmer's penis in front of Pennsylvania voters? Jake, you seem to like that line a lot. Let me tell you that, that I didn't, Donald I, Trump I, is I didn't, doing rallies nonstop around the country. Let me just say something. I don't know about you, but I have a great disdain for the media. Perhaps you've picked that up from me in my analysis on a daily basis. I don't like the way the mainstream legacy corporate owned media operates. I think that they're in the tank for one political ideology in this country and they show it. It's basically propaganda what they do. And even worse, they lie to you. They pretend like they don't have a dog in the fight. They pretend like they don't have any bias. They pretend like they're completely impartial. Now, if you're like me and that drives you up the wall, then you probably have a special little personal disdain for one Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper is the worst offender of this entire thing. He pretends like he doesn't have a political position or a political ideology. He pretends like he's above it all, that he has this pristine journalistic integrity, and it couldn't be further from the truth. And that's why I paid close attention to uh, his engagement, shall we say, with Speaker of the House Mike Johnson this weekend on his show, State of the Union. Let's just start with uh, how the exchange began between the two of them. That's what he's talking about, using the U.S. military against not marauding gangs of uh, Venezuelan. Wait, wait a minute. I, wait, Adam hold on. Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband. Paul. So let me just say, if a Democratic presidential candidate said that you and your wife were evil and that the military should be used against you, I would say that's disgusting. Well, thank you. And and some have said that about us because they don't like my politics. I did not hear President Trump in that clip say he's going to sick the military on Adam Schiff. That's not what he's saying. You've got two different clips in two different contexts. What what President Trump is talking about is that they have been attacking and maligning him from the day he came down that golden escalator. Everybody knows that's true. In, in 2015, 2016, that's when this began. He's been the most attacked maligned political figure in U.S. history. They've tried to kill him twice in the last few months. Who's I mean, they? this is real. And he feels that acutely. And Jake, you what would you too. If you were under attack like he is all the time, every day. They, I mean, Iran, who has assassination attempts sure. out against him. But I that's mean, not crazy, dangerous but people Adam in the Schiff country who and Nancy Pelosi get on rooftops not trying and take to assassinate shots. Donald Trump. All right. I mean, so now I got to jump in here. Because I'm old enough to remember when Gabby Gifford, a congresswoman, was shot in Tucson, Arizona, I had to endure a months long political narrative that the reason some crazed maniac tried to put a bullet in, well, did successfully put a bullet in her brain, thank God she survived, was because of Sarah Palin, Glenn Beck, and Rush Limbaugh's political rhetoric. That's all we heard. In fact, there are still people who believe that. In fact, anytime there is any shooting in this country, people like Jake Tapper and his colleagues in the mainstream media bend over backwards to find some kind of motive that connects the person who has done some sort of horrible shooting somewhere to Republican politics and conservative politics. And when it doesn't materialize, they make it up anyway. And even better, when the politics of the killer, like the transgender maniac in Nashville, Tennessee, trying to kill as many people in a Christian school as she possibly could, when it does end up being left wing ideology that motivates the killer, they don't say anything about it. So here's Jake Tapper saying, who's they? When you say they try to assess someone, who's they? I'll tell you who's they. The guy who got arrested on the golf course in West Palm Beach, Florida, at Trump's golf course, he was arrested because he was a huge consumer of left-wing political news, MSNBC. He used direct talking points from them. He posted MSNBC left-wing garbage all over his social media pages. He wanted to kill Donald Trump because he bought into left-wing political politics. That's who they is, Jake. That's who they are. Yeah, you heard me. But this virtue signaling, because Mike Johnson says they've been trying to arrest him. They've been raided his home. They've tried to throw him in jail. They tried to bring him off the ticket. They even tried to assassinate him. And I love that that's when Jake Tapper draws the line. Wait a minute. Who's they? Hey, Jake, what about all those other things they just said? You concede that they have been doing that, don't you? You concede that they've been trying to arrest their political opponent and throw him in jail, don't you? But this continues. And Johnson, again, Speaker Johnson is really, really good 
and he keeps his cool, he keeps his composure, and he hits right back. I mean, there's this conflation of any. They're not, Jake. They're they're not. But no, but the political attacks have been relentless, and they have been baseless, and they made up the Russian collusion hoax, and they went after him, and have been going after him ever since. They tried to impeach him twice. I mean, they've done real damage in the. In American psyche, what I'm talking about is the political attacks that are so over the top. Kamala Harris has used language saying he's so dangerous to the country. I mean, I've had colleagues in the House say he must be eliminated. He must be extinguished. He's literally I mean, talking about th- this stuff the is military over the top. You know my... against Democrats. I mean, he's literally talking. No, he's not. No, yes, he no, he's not, Jake. No, he's not. No, he's talking about using the National Guard and the military to keep the peace in our streets. In the summer of 2020 that my Democrat colleagues call the summer of love, it was crazy. It was mayhem. And Democratic progressive uh, mayors and governors allowed it to go on, including Tim Walz, who allowed uh, Minneapolis to burn and it's still not uh, rebuilt. Look, Trump is talking about restoring law and order. And I'm telling you, you can mock it. People in the media can mock it. But that resonates with the American people. They are sick of being afraid on the streets of their cities. D- Donald Trump can bring order back to the chaos. They- All right. Um, that- I, I did like I, probably my favorite part here is the look on um, look at Jake Tapper's face. I, honestly, I have, I, have, I have a special disdain for this man. Um, but that does bring us to our next clip, probably the best part of this entire interview. Maybe we should have led with it. Uh, Mike Johnson having to endure Jake Tapper saying peanuts about four or five times in a 40 second window. Uh, I beeped that. Should I beep that, Kevin? Are, are we okay with me saying peanuts? Because I assume that people don't want to hear me say peanuts, but they're about to hear Jake Tapper say peanuts. I mean, what's worse, me saying p or Jake Tapper saying p? You decide. All right, here's Jake Tapper and his, uh, well, his obsession. Policy debate would be better than a personality debate, but if President Biden had gone on stage and spoke about the size of a pro golfer's penis, I think you would be on this show right now saying you were shocked and appalled, and you would suggest it was evidence of his cognitive decline. I wonder how Trump's remarks, not just the one about Arnold Palmer on his quote manhood, but everything we've heard from Trump this week, how it fits in with the analysis that the New York Times offered a few days ago. They looked at his speeches from 2015 and 2016 and looked at his speeches today and said, quote, with the passage of time, the 78 year old former president's speeches have grown darker, harsher, longer, angrier, less focused, more profane, and increasingly fixated on the past. Um, really quickly, if I could just jump in here, who who here is absolutely shocked to learn that the New York Times has analyzed Trump's speeches and reached the conclusion that in some way he's he's darker and angrier and more upset? I, 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 this, this is how the corporate legacy propaganda media's circle jerk happens. The New York Times write this writes this as if it's fact, as if as if this analysis from Peter Baker and Dylan Friedman is in some way valid and news and scientific fact. And then Jake Tapper uses it to pivot a question to Mike Johnson. It's like, isn't it? I mean, the New York Times has said this, Speaker Johnson. Don't you agree? That's not news. This is what I mean when I say this is propaganda media. This is, they're, they're all feeding upon each other and they're all utilizing it, but they're all acting serious with Jake Tapper's furrowed brow saying, well, I read this in the New York Times and it's just undeniably fact. And so, Speaker Johnson, you now have to answer to this and you need to respond that Donald Trump is so angry and mean. Meanwhile, you've got Kamala Harris screaming at a political rally about how Donald Trump must never be allowed to speak before the presidential seal on a podium again. Really, how are you going to accomplish that, Kamala Harris, considering you're second in command of the United States military right now? Are you threatening? I could, I would call that a dark speech, wouldn't you? I would call that threatening, wouldn't you? And by the way, where was Peter Baker and Dylan Friedman from the New York Times talking about the cognitive decline of Joe Biden for, I don't know, the last eight years, let alone the last three and a half years? But no, this is how the propaganda works. But you know what I really miss? I really miss Jake Tapper saying peanut because I've only heard him say it once. So let's get to that, shall we? I know you want to talk about policy, and I respect that, but the reason that Donald Trump is not up 10 points is because of comments like that one. 
where people do have concerns about his fitness, his acuity, and his stability. Um, why is he talking about Arnold Palmer's penis in front of Pennsylvania voters? Jake, you seem to like that line a lot. Let me tell you that, that I didn't Donald mention, Trump is I didn't, doing rallies me, nonstop let me around the country. Let me just say something. <laughs> I don't want okay. to be talking about All this. Right. Donald Trump is out there saying it. It is, but you continue to. Let's talk about because you won't. You won't address wait a minute. It. Hold on. You won't address it. All right. So this is a he said he said situation here about uh, Jake Tapper and his affinity for that word that I won't bother you again with another beep on. Uh, and Mike Johnson sort of uh, poking fun at him about the fact that Dave Tapper keeps going back to to saying that line. And here's Jake Tapper again. Jake Tapper with a furrowed brow. He furrows it well, and he says, "I would prefer not to discuss this." I would prefer not to say it, but it's your candidate. It's Donald Trump who's been just l maligning poor Arnold Palmer or praising Arnold Palmer, whichever the case may be, about the size of his um, club membership. So uh, there's only one way to solve this. And by the way, no, it's not lost on me, the irony that the guy who has to speak about Arnold Palmer's mm, situation is a guy named Mike Johnson. Because I, it's just not fair, but it is what it is. What's your opinion of Arnold Palmer's uh -huh, Mike Johnson? Or shall we talk about Mike Johnson? All right, so here's the, the only way to solve this. I'm such a juvenile. I'm 12. I'm 12 years old. That's why you love me. The only way to solve this is to go to the video type and see exactly what Donald Trump said. Because Jake Tapper is now claiming that Donald Trump spent all this time at a campaign event talking about Arnold Palmer's penis. And did he? Did he? Let's see. Arnold Palmer was all man. And I say that in all due respect to women, and I love women. But this guy, this guy, this is a guy that was all man. This man was strong and tough. And I refuse to say it, but when he took showers with the other pros, they came out of there, they said, oh, my God. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say it. We have women that are highly sophisticated here. But they used to look at Arnold as a bad. But he was really something special. Arnold was something special. So I just want to tell you, you're very lucky, the people that live in the Trobe, and it's an honor for me to be here because of him. And he was a, a actually, he was a great man. And I don't think there would be golf to this, to the extent that you have it today, it probably wouldn't be that way without the great Arnold Palmer. So enjoy it, everybody. Enjoy it. Okay. So. I just, I just love that Jake Tapper is so humorless that he just can't appreciate that. So he brought it up because he was in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, which is the birthplace of Arnold Palmer. So he wanted to talk about Arnold Palmer. And he talked about what a great man he was and how he, you know, made golf what it is today. And that's undeniably true. Um, and he spent, what was it, 20 seconds? 20 seconds, he said guys would leave the showers and say, wow. But guess what he didn't say? He didn't say the word that Jake Tapper seems obsessed with. He, we've heard him say it three times now. And he didn't spend his entire speech talking about Arnold Palmer's uh, situation. It was 15, 20 seconds of a story about, now listen, you may prefer that Donald Trump stick with, stick with issues, but you know what? I'm sick of lamenting Donald Trump not being the candidate that I wish Donald Trump is. He is who he is. Can we deal with that? But but here's Jake Tapper in an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the Speaker of the House of the United States, and he's spending over three minutes talking about it. So who's really obsessed here? So now let's hand it over to Mike Johnson, which is just one of those names. <laughs> and he's going to now set Jake Tapper straight. And again, you decide who's more obsessed, Donald Trump, Mike Johnson, me, or Jake Tapper. He is out there talking to. No, I, I'll address it. Let me, okay, let me answer it. 
Okay, don't say it again. We don't have to say it. I get it. There, there's lines in a, in a rally. When President Trump is at a rally, sometimes he'll speak for two straight hours. You're, you're, you're questioning his stamina, his mental acuity. Joe Biden couldn't do that for five minutes. That's how you started this, this, uh, this segment. You said, what if Biden was in a rally like that? He couldn't fill the room. Donald Trump does. You know why? Because they see him as a change agent and they understand he has a record of performance. In his first administration, we had the greatest economy in the history of the world, Jake, not just the U.S. Everybody's wages were going up. Everybody had more jobs available to them. The pathway out of poverty was widened for more people. And that's what the American people are looking at. We're going to have a demographic shift in this electorate, Jake. There's going to be, when they count the votes and they, they do the math on the other side of this, I'm convinced you're going to have a record number of Hispanic and Latino voters coming into the Republican Party, a record number of Black and African American voters, record number of Jewish voters and union workers and, and, and hardworking families, because they understand the Harris policies have have destroyed their family finances they have made them less safe in their cities they have a wide open border with illegals and terrorists coming into our country this is not working for the american people and they want to change and that's what they see in donald trump so he has fun at the rallies he says things that are off the cuff but i'm telling you i've been in those events i've been in those arenas and people have a great time at those arenas so you can cherry pick a you know a few words or lines out of a two-hour event we could do that with kamala harris after a 20 minute event because she does word salads and she couldn't she couldn't hold court like that without a teleprompter. We all. All right. Uh, good job by Mike Johnson. Uh, let me do, listen. I, he spent a long time saying what I will say in uh, an even shorter amount of time, which is, Jake, people thought it was funny. They like it. They find it humorous. It's a passing thing. You obviously don't find it funny. You don't think it's humorous. Guess what? If the people don't like it and they think it's wrong, they won't vote for him. That's all. It's that simple. But I don't need to defend it. I don't need to talk about it. He works the guy. If, if people don't like it, then he'll probably stop doing it. But as of now, people seem to enjoy it. But back to the larger question about how outrageous and unacceptable and just totally inappropriate and beyond the pale and worthy of Jake Tapper spending that much time on a Sunday show furrowing his brow so well about how unacceptable it is for a president or former president to be talking about Arnold Palmer's um, you know, situation. Uh, could we just remind everybody what happened at the Democratic National Convention? Did, does anyone remember this Barack Obama moment? The childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. <laughs> it, It just goes on and on and on. The other day I heard someone compare Trump to the neighbor who keeps running his leaf blower outside your window every minute of every day. Now, from a neighbor, that's exhausting. From a president, it's just dangerous. Yeah, Donald Trump's dangerous. Did you catch that moment, though? I mean, everyone in the crowd seemed to know exactly what he was doing there. And if you look at how the Telegraph uh, described this moment, Barack Obama uses hand gesture to mock Trump, Trump's obsession with crowd sizes. What was that hand gesture Barack Obama used? Conspiracy theories. This weird obsession with crowd sizes. I think everybody in the room knows exactly what he was doing. He knows exactly what he was doing. He's smooth. But you saw him look down at, you know, that. Right? With crowd sizes. Jake, are, are we going to, you know, have an issue with this? Jake Tepper? Furrowed brow? Are we going to have any sort of, no, we're done? Not an issue, not important? Listen, I'm not here to say that I want my politicians to spend more time talking about um, the size of the endowed or less endowed people in our pop culture or politics. I don't. I really, really don't. 
But I also don't think that it's something that Jake Tapper needs to spend his time on when it's only going in one direction. As soon as Jake Tapper does his special segment about Barack Obama talking about Trump's crowd size, then I'll believe we actually have a fair and impartial media. But until that day comes, well, let's just say I'm glad they are who they are and do what they do. And I'm glad you come here for mature and appropriate and sober political analysis.